Disney needed a whole matrix of supercomputers to handle the incredible detail in Big Hero 6. They designed 83,000 buildings in this city and a quarter of a million trees. But even the most advanced movies in the world start with simple pencil drawings as the artists come up with ideas for the characters. So I was the, the lead character designer for the show. I designed most of uh, the main characters that you see in the film and uh, mostly um, uh, focused on the hero and Baymax. Looks like a walking marshmallow. Have a lollipop. Nice. It always starts with uh, a lot of research. Um, with Baymax, our director actually found out about soft robotics. And I thought that was really cool. So, um, so on top of that idea, on top of these uh, Japanese bells, there's this, these two circles with a line connecting to it. Maybe that could be you know, possibly his eyes. That's two circles with a line connecting to it. And um, we actually found that if, you know, within those limitations, you could actually do a lot with that character. We wanted Hero to be appealing, but um, also very relatable. So the way I related with Hero was uh, just with just imagining myself as a 14-year-old kid. I also did these drawings, like, you know, what's his daily life like? So I thought Hero would play video games while eating some ramen, while also doing his homework at the same time. And uh, so like all those things like really help make this character believable and hopefully people out there like really connect with him. Absolutely. You're going bot fighting, aren't you? There's a fight across town. If I book, I can still make it. When are you gonna start doing something with that big brain of yours? What, go to college like you? so people can tell me stuff I already know. Unbelievable. So now we've got these amazing characters and drawings, let's meet the animators who take the simple 2D sketches and work out how they should move in a 3D world. What is that? Well, we looked at uh, a lot of different things as to uh, how we can have Baymax walk. Uh, and we knew it needed to be uh, appealing and cute, so we looked at everything cute from toddlers to pandas, and what we landed on was penguins. They don't actually use their arms a whole lot, so we did a little test in. What you got right there is uh, Baymax is in penguin form. Everyone agreed that the, the penguin was the cutest. So what we have here is uh, just another test, and uh, how we're gonna differentiate the other characters from a character like Baymax. So the head of animation, Zach Parrish, really tasked us with a seemingly simple task like walking into a cafe and sitting down. So right here, we've got Hiro Hamada. Uh, he comes into the, the cafe. He's sort of this 14-year-old, cool, confident kind of kid. This, for example, was uh, referenced by my younger brother, Jordan. Like, he did this really cool thing where he, like, kicked this, the chair right before he sat down. And so I layered that in. I thought that was a really cool little nuance thing. And we did a whole bunch of these with every character. And while you're watching all this, you can really see that Baymax is really the one that stands out because he's not moving at all. And so this is sort of like w where we coined the term animate, mm -hmm. um, where we're really stripping down to the things that you really need. The more we, we stripped away, the more we found that audiences could project their own emotions onto Baymax. So those, these are what these uh, short little tests really helped to establish early 